Hello, good day. Welcome to Learn Smart with Faith or Lassen Day. Today, we are going to be treating function. And yeah, let's get started. Welcome back. Function is very simple and not as complex as what was given in the classroom. Uh, yeah, what was given is a whole bunch of mathematical terms put here just to confuse you. But be of good cheers. For God is not wicked. <laughs> yeah, I'll try my best to simplify it as much as possible. Now let's break it down. Let's say hex and y are certain variables. And remember variables are those that can take any value. If the value of y depends on the x, then we can say y is a function of x. It means x is the independent variable and y is the dependent variable because y depends on x. You get, you get that? So let, let's try some examples. For you to be a student, a happy student. <laughs> Well, uh, happy or not, for you to be a student, you must have done jump, post jump, and university must have chosen you, right? Then we can say being a student is a function of doing jump, post jump, and university selection. Okay, let's try this. And by the way, you making me happy is a function of you hitting that subscribe button and the bell icon next to it. Do you get it? Uh, if you do, why don't you hit that subscribe button to appreciate if you are not yet subscribed. Thank you. Now let us do something more mathematical. Let's say x has values 1, 2, 3 and y is 1, 4, 9. We can say y is a function of x to the power of 2, right? It means y depends on x to the power of 2 to have its value. The values that x takes is called domain. In this case, are uh, 1, 2, 3. The values that y gets after using the value of x is called the range. The range in this case are 1, 4, 9. If in the future I use more of domain and range, I believe you should understand. Now, it is possible that you have many values of y that have nothing to do with x. All the value that y has is called the co-domain. Now don't get it wrong. The value of x is called the domain. The value that y could be is called co-domain. The value y gets after using x in its function is called the range. Now let's make this a little clear with, with mapping. This is x and this is y. These are the values in them based on the example earlier. It means one from the domain maps to one from the range with a function of x squared. The same goes for two mapping to four and three mapping to nine. There can be many values for y, which is called the codomain, but the particular one in the codomain that associates with the domain is called the range. This brings us to the next topic, the types of functions. That are important for you to know. The first one is one to one or the injective function. If the domain maps to a very unique range, the function is said to be one to one. What am I trying to say? In the earlier example, you can see that every value of x maps to just one value of y each. Then x square is one to one function within the limits of the values that we have for x. You understand what I mean better with this next one. Now the next type of function I want to treat is the onto function. Now the onto function does not map unique domain to range. This means that two or more values of x can have the same value for y. Let's try this example. Take the domain to be 2, 1, 0, minus 1 and minus 2. If we map with the function x squared, you would realize that 2 and minus 2 maps to 4. Minus 1 and 1 maps to 1. Two value maps to 1 as you can see. So this is an onto function within the values we have for the domain. Generally speaking, if we use all the numbers that exist to judge as the domain for x, we say x squared is an onto function. If a function can be both one to one and onto, then it is called a bijective function. We also have the identity function. Identity function is the one that 
has the same value for domain and range. It means if the value you see in the domain is the same as what you see in the range. It's as simple as that. Composite function, in this case, it is a function that has a function in it. That is a function of a function. Well, there's nothing much to stress about in this. You don't have to stress yourself so much. Let's just know what is meant to be known. Now, let's take for example, let's say f of x is 2x and g of x is x plus 1. f of x is a function on its own, g of x is another function on its own. And the question comes, what is g of f of x? Now, g of f of x is a composite function. It means there is a function inside another function. Now, what does this mean? It means wherever you see x in g of x, put f of x. So, g of x equals to x plus 1. Now, g of f of x will become f of x plus 1. That x has turned to f of x. Now, since f of x is 2x, therefore, g of f of x equals 2x plus 1. You can try f of g of x. And uh, let me see the first to comment the right answer. You might be lucky to win something. We also have the periodic function, it is the one that repeats itself over a regular interval and a good example are the cosine, sine, tangent of a 2 pi. We have the exponential function that is expressed as y equals to exponent x and uh, the inverse of the exponential function is the logarithmic function which is the logarithm that you are all used to. Polynomial function also takes the form of a polynomial. Well, these are not the main focus. It's not that they will be asking you types of function in the exam. Let's go to the main thing. Let's go to the real deal. We know function questions are quite straightforward. For example, y is a function of x and f of x is x squared plus 1. What is f of 2? You know, it is very straightforward. All you just need to do is put 2 as x, right? But don't expect this in the exam. <laughs> And uh, so the answer is also to put 2 as x and uh, that's 5, right? Well, let's take another example. y is a function of x. Now, f of x is x plus 2 divided by x minus 2. Let's say the domain for these are 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, when x is 1, y is minus 3. I think you do the rough calculation. But when x is 2, then y becomes undefined because by the time you put 2 there you get 0 as the denominator and um, this is where I'm to you would realize that we can't possibly get a value for the function when x is 2 this means the function is undefined you can't get a value for it now don't mix it up being undefined does not mean it's 0 0 is a value but undefined is infinity you cannot attach a value to it now as i get to a point in the function that gets undefined the function breaks at that point if you draw it on a graph this is called a discontinuous function now let's try a typical question you will see in exam at what point is f of x equals x minus 3 divided by x plus 3 discontinuous by the time you calculate it, it is the point where the denominator is 0, that's minus 3, isn't it? Minus 3 will make the denominator 0, so the answer is at the point where x is minus 3. But how can you solve a discontinuous function? That brings us to the next topic, which is limits. Join me as we uncover limits and its shortcuts in the next video. Until then. Bye.